Hello friends! In this video we'll take a closer look at the Panasonic EVA1 camera with the Skahoi RCP. So what is an RCP and why discuss this anyway? Well, if you use cameras in a live production environment, you want to match the cameras because you are gonna cut between them. So, you want the pictures from one camera to match in tone of color and also the light intensity of the picture between those cameras. This is what you use an RCP for. It's a control panel. It has uh, an iconic component, the iris joystick, which is um, a component that will turn uh, up and down, so to speak, the light of the camera. So it, it will adjust the iris of the camera. And you typically have a whole array of these panels next to each other in an OB van so that you have one for each camera. So in this case, obviously, we have only one camera, so we have also only one RCP, and that's what we will focus on here. I am very excited to um, feature a Canon lens on the EVA1 camera today. So thank you Canon for lending this lens to us. Um, let's just see if you can if you can see it here. It's a an 18 to 80 millimeter lens. Um, I really don't know a whole lot about the lens. It's just um, one that we have been are provided with which works with this camera and the cool thing is that it actually integrates with the camera so we can adjust zoom and focus from the RCP to the lens along with a whole lot of other parameters and that's what I, I'm excited about showing you today. So um, yeah so we have the EVA, EVA1 camera here with the 18 to 80 Canon broadcast lens on the camera and as I just said the most important thing about an RCP the yeah, that is really adjusting the iris. And as you can see with this lens on, we have we have shown EVA1 before, and that was with a photographic lens. So it had a stepping iris. We could still control the iris, but it was stepping. So it was not ideal for broadcast, but just look at this. We have absolute perfect control of the iris of this uh, lens from the Skahoi RCP. That's really great. Now, I also talked about controlling zoom and focus on the lens. So I'll dive right into that and after that I'll get to all the other parameters which you might have seen in a, in a quick tour through the RCP in a previous video. So, um, so yeah, we can adjust the iris. We got that. We can also adjust the master black with the ring here. So we have seen that. But now, um, the joystick pad on the RCP, which is this component, it's, um, it's actually pressure sensitive. So when I push the upper side of this component, you can see it's beginning to creep zoom with the lens. And if I'm pressing even harder, it's zooming quicker, all right? So I can go the other way as well, obviously. So far, so good. Now, what I want to show you is that you can also do this not, not, not just with an so-called so intensity component like the joystick. You can also do it with encoders. And that is really nice for focus, for instance. So, but we also do it for zoom. So you can see in the upper menu, we have our creep zoom, step zoom, speed of zoom and fine zoom. Now, that's all the parameters we put out into this menu. And um, let's just do the creep zoom at first. So when I turn this, let's just turn it quickly. You can see I, I bring it all the way up to eight and it's just zooming in super quickly. And I, if I go the other way, it's zooming out again. So of course you can imagine what happens if I set it to two. So now notice, okay, now I'm at four. So it's just slowly zooming. Very, very convenient that from the RCP or any other Skahoi panel, you can connect to this camera and then you can ask it to begin a zoom at a fixed speed just slowly. So that's really neat. And now I'm turning it off again. You can even see that the, um, um, the position of the zoom is also shown in the display. Really cool as well. Now, uh, the speed of zoom is what uh, that, that will affect and I wonder if it affects the creep zoom actually. No, it doesn't. But it does affect the step zoom because that's another way to control the zoom. You can actually step it by turning this um, this encoder here. And so I'm turning it and then it's moving forward. I think I need a higher speed on it to really be effective. Now you can see it's like stepping, zooming closer and closer. Step. 
All right. So you can also adjust the zoom in steps if you want. So that will be up to you whether you want to use the one or the other method. Now, let's look at focus because focus is, in my opinion, a more relevant setting or parameter to adjust by actually using an, en an encoder. So uh, for this, I would prefer to get a little bit closer to, uh, to this one. And then I'm just asking my cameraman to move the camera. Yes, thank you. So um, again, creep focus. So that's kind of the same. And you can actually hear, if, if you were in my position here, you could, you could hear the, the servo of the lens uh, operating the zoom. So, yeah. So now you can see the, uh, sorry, not the zoom, the focus. The focus is changing, but it is uh, changing past the point that I want. Now, um, what I, setting the, the speed with an encoder is really not ideal, neither for, for, for zoom or focus. But for zoom, there is this application of the creep zoom, which I think is great for an encoder if you want to just set that fixed speed. While if you, if you actually wanted to control focus like this, you would probably want to have like a joystick component where you could move it just until it was right there and then back again. Now, uh, what we rather want to do is to uh, adjust focus by steps. So you can see I'm able to step it and you can see that neither of these steps are really bringing it completely into focus. I'm not, I'm not really happy with this yet. So um, this is all about the speed of the focus. So if I set the speed of focus to three, then each time I'm turning it, it takes smaller steps. Now, um, I think if I set up the speed again to six, you can see that this is the large steps it makes. Also, for this encoder, when I press it, I get different steps. So actually, these are more core steps. You can see it's moving further every time I'm, I'm taking a step. And when I press it, then it is mo moving in smaller steps. So what you want here is to find what is your particular speed that you prefer. And then you can use the encoder to step focus. Um, you, you can, if you press it, then you have a course mode. When you press it again, you toggle over to fine mode and you can fine tune your focus. So let's just get this focus fine tuned, right? So I'm turning it until I'm perfectly happy with my little Lego Obi-Wan uh, production crew. So that was zoom and focus with this great Canon lens 18 to 80. Um, very, very excited to see it on this brilliant EVA1 camera. All the other settings in the RCP would be the next topic now. And um, uh, let's just recap. We had the Irish joystick here. We already saw that it works fine with Master Black and also the Irish settings. Um, Auto Iris is um, a setting you can toggle on and off here. We have uh, active panel and all these things. Um, let's not dive into that, but then move up to the menu up here. So actually zoom and focus I had on these encoders were put into the seventh menu item, um, which is selectable by the top row of buttons. So really, if you, if you look at the RCP, you can see I press the first one and I get into a menu with uh, red, green, blue pedestal and master pedestal. Also master knee, enable, point and slope, chroma over there. If I go to the next one, I have linear matrix enable. So if I enable that, I can adjust linear matrix parameters as you can see uh, so forth. I'll just disable it again. If I go over here, I have access to frame rate, um, exposure index and so forth. In the next one, um, this would be uh, white balance and also detail. Gamma uh, stuff, um, black gamma stuff, and then color correction, and finally the creep zoom stuff. So if we go back here, we have red, green, and blue pedestal. So um, turning these knobs, you can see I'm now adding red in, in the uh, dark area of the picture uh, as I'm turning this knob. So obviously the same would happen if I, if I increase green. Uh, I can even do it in larger steps just to make my point a little quicker. Right there. Um, okay, so I have master and knee enable on off on the buttons just below, and you can see how the displays respond uh, accordingly. I can take all the chrome out of the picture if I want. So now essentially we have a black and white picture, and I can also press and hold to bring it back to zero. Great. So going on, uh, continuing to the linear matrix, uh, you already saw that, so I enable it here, and then you can adjust all these parameters. We can also, uh, let me just see. Yeah, you can see the effect of linear matrix. So uh, I'm not gonna paint the picture, but this would be uh, in, as far as I know, classic painting by these, but I can also reset them all to a nice zero if I want by press or hold. 
Then I move on to frame rate. If I um, turn on my variable shutter, you can see that I can adjust between shutter modes, seconds or degrees, and you can adjust the, the shutter speed here um, for the camera. Uh, let's just turn this off. Um, in those cases, then these parameters are dictated by the camera. So uh, ND filter is possible to operate right there. And that's, um, um, there's a little motor inside that moves that filter around. That's neat. Uh, variable uh, frame rate on off, and then you can set the frame rate over here. Um, exposure in index, uh, we can set some gain stuff. Uh, and choose the different types, um, dB high, and um, we have ISO 2400, 800, and native. So all these things are in this little menu. So we move on to this one. In this case, I'm running with, with a white balance that is um, a bank A, which has been uh, corrected to my studio lighting here. Uh, we can also choose color temperatures, like which are preset in the camera, as you can see I'm doing right now. So um, basically everything we have access to is also in the menu of the camera. So if you know your camera, you know that everything is also found on the RCP. That's really powerful. Uh, automatic black balance uh, trigger over here. And then we have uh, detail settings, um, coring, master, frequency. You can turn it on and off and so forth. Uh, video gamma. Um, here we can go to HDL. And also um, there are a few other modes that you can see. Some of them will have parameters, others won't. And uh, going back to video gamma, you can see how we can adjust the, the gamma with the setting just next to right there. Um, black gamma on and off, yes, on, on the lower one here. Now, um, one of the powerful things about this RCP is that it has a much better navigation of the menu in the EVA1 camera than the camera itself has in my humble opinion. So I want to prove that point to you. And the first thing I, I will show you is that we are using the shift key to do something clever. So with the shift key, you can see that there are a few buttons that becomes active. Huh. I could, for instance, talk about the scene selection because scene selection is something that would radically change your picture if you change the scene. So we put it behind the shift key. I hold down the shift key and then when I press the side of the scene selection button, you see changes to the picture. So really the scene is like a whole, um, it's all the settings recorded in a scene. So if you change scene, then you change multiple settings instantaneously. That's very powerful. But you also want to avoid doing that during a production, which is why we use the shift key to enable disable access to the uh, scene selection. So the way we program this button is using the four-way button feature, meaning that when I hold down the shift key and when I press the sides of the button, I am changing the parameter. So I press on the right side and you can see the scene is going up. And when I press on the left side, the scene number is going down to one in this case. Um, and also another feature we decided to hide behind this, uh, the shift key was the, the color bars. So you see now we have color bars on the output and now I'm turning it off again. That is also one thing you want to avoid doing during a production. So why not hide it behind the shift key? And then now is time for the menu. So the menu, and this is why I use the shift key anyway, is one where um, behind the shift key, you can see that this button, menu enable button, also turns on and off whether or not you have the menu on your SDI output. You need that if you want to sit back in your master control room and actually uh, access and browse the menu of the camera. So it's on and it means that on the output we'll be able to see this. So now I'm releasing it and now I'm turning on the menu and now you see the menu on the output from the camera back in the master control room. And then you use this key which is now enabled to navigate your menu and it's super Intuitive, just like the little graphic in the display shows you, there'll be up, down, lift, right. So as I press down, I am going up and down in the menu settings. I can now access recording settings by going left, sorry, right. <laughs> Even my six year old son figure out left and right better than me. Um, let's move on to this one. So we go right and then I could select something and now I changed this setting, obviously, by selecting it to the right, and now I can exit by going left again. Or I can just press the menu option. That is also super convenient, but in a sense, you don't need it anymore because all these settings are already ready in your RCP. But then let's imagine that Panasonic left out a few things that you still want to navigate the menu to access, and you can do that. So,
proudly presenting the Skahoi RCP with the EVA1 camera from Panasonic. Hope you enjoyed this video and um, I came out on the other side uh, better informed and uh, about this camera and the control options that Skahoi brings to the market. Thank you.